ladies and gentlemen what's up what is good with y'all yes i know i'm very late to the party with this but look everybody's already put out their reviews and shit so i may as well put out mine so bad blood 2024 was honestly a great show it was overall great fantastic show um was there in person actually um it was me and my fiance we went fantastic first off um wwe uh city of atlanta everything great put out everything the whole nine yards but please be aware if there's two other events going on just give everybody a heads up so that way they can get down there early and stuff like that because especially you're out of staters but that's besides the point that's besides the point we're here to just talk about bad blood at its finest give my honest thoughts give my honest opinions give my reviews and everything so that being said we're going to jump right in to the very first match on this card and that was cm punk versus drew mcintyre inside hell in a cell and we missed like the first few minutes of it but um once we found parking got inside the match was still going and let me tell you the end of the like you know the last little bit of the match the last couple minutes it was a it was back and it was just insane and honestly i could and i and of course this is a valid this is a valid reason why this also should have been main event of the entire show but you know we're gonna you know get to the actual main event later on in the video but first off punk and drew put their fucking bodies on the line with this match um especially where um towards the end of it um or like middle end drew got fucking clocked in like the top of his head with a um with a toolbox a metal toolbox needed 16 stables because of it there's pictures floating all over the internet about it and stuff like that you know when it happened um punk you know after being beat down and all that still was able to like you know manage manage to get himself out of the arena and walk out of the cell close the cell behind him and that last little image where he was just standing at the entrance way yeah that was that was fire that was clean overall this match was fantastic from start to finish and it was pure cinema um but we're gonna move on to the next match on this card um and it was the wwe women's championship match between bailey and nia Jax. so the women's w the wwe women's championship match honestly i feel like this was the better this honestly this was it was a, it was a great match it was a really good match um overall both bailey and naya you know they put on a put on a good show but of course having to come at you know come out after a hell in a cell match it kind of takes the crowds really they didn't seem into it but we were all into it um but you know that just just like it took everybody out when hell in a cell happened but um overall couple things first off seeing the ref um in a woman's match get taken out especially someone like jessica carr that was that was a neat little thing for for it to happen to tease a tiffany stratton cash in which we all hoped it happened but it didn't happen it disappointed all of us it disappointed a lot of us i was disappointed and everybody else was disappointed as well too but you know they still keep teasing it they still keep teasing it so i feel like eventually down the road yes tiffany stratton will cash in on naya to start that whole ordeal but right now at the moment um they didn't do that uh bailey lost off of the distraction from tiffany Stratton with the money in bank briefcase and you know she got dropped and <laughs> laid out by naya and yeah overall though match was solid it was a solid match from beginning to end and it didn't feel like it didn't disappoint too too much but it, the only thing that was disappointing for a lot of us fans was that you know tiffany stratton could have cashed in but they're just keep teasing it over and over but that's besides the point and we're gonna move on to the next match on the card which is one of the terror twins versus judgment day matches and that's finn balor versus damian priest now honestly I was hoping Finn was gonna win this, yo. 
but it, it, it was like okay it kind of disappointed a lot of people in a way where you know they were hoping Finn would win via you know making this judgment day look strong look you know really tough and really brooding but nope uh while watching the match and stuff you know it was it was some nice sequences some nice little back and forths but you know once the judgment day came out and started interfering um priest took out carlito and took out fucking um jd bobble jd mcdonough because you know where was living dom cruising through downtown atlanta where with no nowhere to be found doing whatever they were doing so yeah um off priest was still able to win off the distraction also getting coup de gras three times to his back and i think one to the back of the neck or back of his head that it that just looked awful but priest was able to you know power through it push through it picked up the dub pick up the win the match overall itself was a it was a it was a great match within itself um but i still personally feel like i wish finn got the win to some to keep the semi ang like you know they cement that viewed even more but you know i i wanted to see how it plays out even more now i think they just wanted to do priest and balor at bad blood and i think they might just be done here hopefully fingers crossed they're done but overall you know match was solid now it's time to move on to the match that started out good and decent and then it ended in complete shit showery which is Liv morgan versus Rhea Ripley for the WWE Women's World Championship while Dom is hanging in a shark cage. Now, first off, the match was great. It was starting out great, starting out solid. Dom being a fool, trying to get out of the steel, get out of the shark cage, hold nine yards, Rhea and Liv doing their thing in the ring. Then Dom falls out and he's hooked by his leg from the harness and we all thought you know he was gonna like that that first off um i hope dom was okay during that whole situation i know that's that's something scary um but this also ensued a distraction for Rhea. so Rhea decided to be like hey i'm gonna grab me a kendo stick i'm gonna start beating the fuck out of dom with it and everything um in all honesty Rhea could have won here and picked up the win but the ending like the the end the ending of that match was so botched to the point where a lot of us were we were all confused I was confused people in front of me were confused people behind me were confused the people that were sitting next to me my fiance were confused like what the fuck was that so um after reading some stuff and doing a little digging it got botched so apparently Raquel came back. Yes, she did come back. She did return. And that was to solve the Rhea Ripley issue. Rhea Ripley problem. What was supposed to happen was Rhea was supposed to be in the ring and then get Tahana bombed and then Liv, Rhea, Raquel drags Liv over Rhea. Rhea, Liv gets the win. Well, that didn't happen. The ref waved off the match, but the bell rang. It, it was that whole ending sequence of it was a mess. But what was really in reality supposed to happen was, you know, Ref was distracted by Dom. And, you know, like I said earlier, Raquel Dahana bombs Rhea, drags Liv over, Raquel dips out of the ring, rolls away so that she so the ref doesn't see her, and then go from there. But um, you know, Liv retained, which I had a gut feeling she was gonna retain, honestly. And there's gonna probably be a few between Rhea and Raquel now, and then some others i don't know how long this is gonna go i hope it doesn't go into wrestlemania please don't stretch this to wrestlemania because look this whole judgment day stuff i think we're all kind of over it now at this point and we're just done but um honestly if this match didn't shit the bed it would have been great it would have been pretty it would have been solid but it shit the bed towards the end and it was it was an okay match i'll just say that it wasn't okay the starter was was pretty was solid just towards the end it was okay and now we move on to the main event of the show the tag match between the bloodline of solo so solo sokoa and jacob fatu 
versus the versus the undisputed WWE champion Cody Rhodes and the OTC, the original tribal chief Roman Reigns. And first off, um getting to everybody's entrances like towards the end, if there's anything unique, stuff like that. I'll get that get into that towards the end. Um, but everything about the match itself was it was it was like you're just, you're taking in like a moment for a second like it was like a big fight feel in a way and the sequences everything about that match was pretty was really great um getting to see roman back in a ring and back in action for the first time since april after losing to cody rhodes at, uh, at wrestlemania was like fever dream like total fever dream because like after we after the match after the show and everything we left still a complete total fever dream but it, it's it's insane to see roman and cody the team up on the same side so now how does that that, that could protect that pulls some strings for some folks everything we don't know how that's gonna play out but it added a different element to see that two uh two guys who have respect for each other respect for each other's dads all that stuff and were enemies becoming having a be, teaming together to ha take out a common enemy in solo sokoa and jacob Atu in the new bloodline now between the superman punches the spears cody fucking going through a table with jacob Atu, that would that was that literally was like yeah cody was like i'm getting my i'm getting my lick back with this because you know cody remembered the first time jacob Atu put him through a table Cody returned the favor. Now, after Cody went through a table with Jacob Fatu, the of course the Tongas, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa come out, distract, you know, distract Roman and the whole nine yards. Solo spears Roman. One, two. Roman kicks out at two. There's a little bit going on. But out slides from up under the ring. Someone in a black hood, black jacket, hood black sweats white white shoes it looks like nikes look like i think they probably might have been forces uh super kicks the shit out of tama tonga and tonga loa and then pulls out the headband the bandana it was jimmy we got a jimmy uso return which a lot of people in the arena were thinking it was jay i was like nah that's not jay that's jimmy because we saw jay earlier partying up with everybody it was jimmy who came back jimmy's coming back and so with jimmy not being back and him getting his get back on this new version of the bloodline that took him out oh yeah this is slowly setting up the pieces for um survivor series war games which most likely will be a bloodline og bloodline versus new bloodline of course which is really obvious that it's state that's you know cementing out to be after um but you know Solo distracted by Jimmy, turns around, gets speared by Roman, one, two, three. Cody and Roman pick up the dub, pick up the win. Now, after the match, uh, Cody was still in the ring by himself. Uh, Roman and Jimmy were out there talking because, you know, just walking away. Then Cody gets jumped by the new bloodline. Then Jimmy and Roman go back in, help out Cody. Well, after that exchange, Roman gives Cody the title. Cool. Cody raises up the title. Then all you hear is, all you hear is if you smell. I, I don't, you know what? I may just put the clip. I don't know if I, I don't even know if I got a You know what? I'm gonna find a clip. I think I have the clip to put in here because you guys will probably enjoy it. Or I may post my reaction to The Rock fucking showing up. Um, it, first off, everybody in the arena lost their shit and where i was sitting at where we were sitting at so we were back behind the entrance like the tron and we couldn't see him we were hoping he would take a couple more steps out so i could take fucking pictures of him but that's besides the point the rock showed up and he did this whole one two three and then put his hand put, you know did that and then just to 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 cody and roman and i guess jimmy as well too but <laughs> I guess it shows now that the rock being back it's going to it's the pieces of you know the bloodline civil war is going to happen and also too i feel like 
We don't want a triple threat between Roman, Cody, and Rock. We want Rock versus Roman, Cody versus Randy. Just let it happen at WrestleMania and just go from there. Um, but overall, the show show from start to finish was great. The matches individually themselves, of course, you know, already did that. Now, um, some highlights of the night that were great. Um, first off, um, Drew taking that claymore, trying to taking that bump on the steel steps to his back. Ugh. That that looked very uncomfortable. That made me even feel uncomfortable. And I was just sitting in my seat. That made me feel uncomfortable and made my back hurt a little bit. So I'm like, damn. Um, that was a little highlight moment. Then of course, Punk hitting the GTS with um with uh some chain wrapped around his knee. Um, of course, Tiffany Stratton with the cash in. That was a great highlight of the night. Um, seeing Dom and Liv pull up in the fucking low rider. That shit was fire, and actually, I wanted it myself. I was about to, I was about to, you know, be like, "Hey, look, if I get banned from the arena, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna hop myself down there and go take that low rider if I got to." But um, that, and then, of course, also to um, seeing now, some of y'all may knock me for this, but seeing the band be there, I enjoyed the first chunk of it. But now, once they played Cody's music. It fucked up. It got very awkward, very fast, and very just way out of beat and out of tune. Well, not out of tune, but way off beat. So from now on, WWE, look me in my eyes. If you ever do bands or bring marching bands to events, save that shit for WrestleMania or save that shit for WrestleMania or SummerSlam, please. Not in indoor arenas. Like not in somewhere like State Farm Arena. Like for bad blood, no. I get it, it was homecome. It was, his, you know, he was, it was Cody's hometown. I used to live in Atlanta and if I was coming back and I was a wrestler I would want that but you know I would say that for Wrestlemania honestly now seeing Roman come out it just was, it was magic it was straight magic man um that's that's you know a couple little highlights tonight. oh yeah also too um before we wrap everything up um yeah while leaving the arena I ran to Zilla Fatu and got a picture with Zilla Fatu so um that was another highlight of the night as well too but you know my honest thoughts and opinions of bad blood it was not a bad show it was a great show you know just pick up moments with matches everything now if you guys enjoyed the video let me know in the comment section down below subscribe if you're brand new to the channel and yeah um i'll probably post you know my reactions or you know my little my moments of when you know the rock showed up jimmy's return the punk finish everything um on here if not you guys probably may find it on tiktok yeah so if you guys enjoyed i'm out and i'll see y'all later